my client was also denied parenting time on August 15 through 18. And with that, I would ask for my client to be allowed to testify, please. Okay. Hey guys, today we have a hearing where mom is being held in contempt of court for failing to produce the child for dad's parenting time. Apparently this is like the fourth time too. Check out my new true crime channel, Mom's Murder Menace. Ms. Henderson, any, uh, what are your thoughts? Thank you, Your Honor. We would ask for a bench warrant to be issued due to failure to appear. Further, I would ask for the show cause hearing to still proceed. My client is prepared to testify as our witnesses. We would ask for the relief sought in the show cause motion. Um, I would also argue that the motion that plaintiff had filed back in the beginning of July, but noticed up for today for modification of parenting time should also be heard as that was part of today's hearing. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bland, your response. Well, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I anticipated, even as of last night, that my client would be here today. I received a phone call, actually, as I was parking uh, my vehicle out front of the courthouse at 1231. She, uh, Ms. Coolidge indicated to me that she was having uh, car trouble. She was still in Indiana, that she couldn't. She had driven her car to a dealership and she would not be able to be here. So I told her I would indicate that to the court. Obviously, given that, uh, I would ask that due to the fact that that's extenuating circumstances that she either A, be allowed to appear by Zoom or B, that she be allowed to appear by telephone or, um, or that the matter be adjourned. I appreciate what counsel said. I'm not trying to... to dispute her. I'm just trying to deal with the circumstances I've been pre presented. Okay. Likewise, on the motion, my motion, I, I would ask that it be adjourned and or at least I'd be allowed to withdraw it and re-notice at a different time. I don't. I was anticipating testimony to support that and I don't feel I can do that without my client. Um, I don't think it carries, I don't think it's on the same level as maybe the show cause and so forth, but I guess uh, the court's aware of how I would like to proceed. Okay. Uh, Ms. Henderson, any response on this uh, desire motion to withdraw or withdraw the motion? Um, well, I think, Your Honor, withdrawal of the motion will just uh, get it refiled and we'll be here again. Uh, my client will be accruing more attorney's fees. At this time, the motion was filed two months ago, approximately. Um, I think it's appropriate for the court to hear it. Testimony is not necessary for the motion hearing, only for the evidentiary hearing, which would be ordered if the court finds that there's proper cause and change in circumstances. Um, so at this point, I would ask for the court to proceed and decide that motion and then further to um, issue an order that would prohibit Ms. Coolidge from filing any similar motions for a period of six months at least. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Well, in this matter, uh, court does note that uh, Mr. Bland's obviously in a difficult position with not having uh, a party present to, uh, again, present proofs in this particular matter. Uh, regardless of what uh, we think as to her motives in not appearing today, uh, it is the fact that he's not able to proceed with his motion. Yes, it's his motion or the plaintiff's motion. He has a right, right to withdraw his motion if he wishes to do so. And as a result, the court will grant the motion to withdraw his motion for modification of parenting time at this point. Uh, court will, in this matter, uh, enter a bench warrant for plaintiff Samantha Coolidge for her failure to appear at this hearing, notice to appear in person. She had repeated uh, uh, communication to, uh, to appear in person and uh, has not appeared. And uh, as a result, the court does believe it's appropriate. Court will enter a uh, bench warrant for her arrest and the court will set a zero bond in this matter so that she's not able to be bonded out till such time as she comes before the court. And uh, I guess I'll ask Ms. Henderson that she would prepare that bench warrant in a, the zero bond. With that, we're ready to proceed on the um, 
defendant's motion in this matter. Um, Ms. Henderson, do you wish to make an opening statement or proceed to proofs? Um, Your Honor, we would proceed to the substantive portion of our hearing. I would ask for our witnesses to be allowed to be sequestered. Okay. We can sequester the witnesses if you wish to do so. So, Just to be fair. Yeah, you'll have to uh, wait outside until, we're, until we call you. Um, Your Honor, as a logistical matter as well, since we filed the motion, another parenting time denial occurred. So in our motion, we referenced uh, August 1 through 4. Our motion was filed on um, August 5th. Um, since that time and sub uh, previous to the motion hearing on the 19th, my client was also denied parenting time on August 15 through 18. And with that, I would ask for my client to be allowed to testify, please. Okay. Well, let me give uh, Mr. Bland an opportunity to uh, make an opening statement if he wishes to do so or waive the opening statement or reserve the opening statement. I would waive you on it. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. Thank you. Sir, what we'll do is have you step forward. We'll have you sworn in and then we'll proceed. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the full truth and nothing but the truth? Okay. Go ahead and have a seat, sir. And go ahead, Ms. Henderson. Thank you. Mr. Hankey, could you please state your full name and spell your last name for the record? Jared Hankey, H-E-N-K-E. -E. Thank you. And are you the father of Mackenzie? Yes, I am. Uh, we filed a motion asking for plaintiff to show why she's not complying with a parenting time order. You alleged in that motion that you were denied parenting time on August 1st through 4th. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, was there any communication previous to that parenting time between you and Ms. Coolidge where she advised you she would not be bringing the child? Uh, casual text messages. Um saying that she was not going to show up. And, and that um, communication occurred right after the hearing on our third motion for contempt of court that we had um, heard by referee Larry Snyder the day before on July 31st. Is that correct? That is correct. And do you recall if referee advised Ms. Coolidge to follow the court order at that last hearing? Yes. Okay. And did she in fact follow the court order and produce the child? She did not. She has not been. Okay. Um, I understand that your mom did transport for that particular parenting time. Is that correct? That's correct. And we'll ask her about the details of that. Following uh, the um, fact that Miss Coolidge did not show up to the parenting time exchange, did you hear from her? I did not. Uh, did you uh, reach the child through her own phone? Uh I think I believe I'm still blocked. So you tried to reach, but you were not able to get in contact. Right. And how do you know that you're still blocked despite the court order? Uh, when I send the text, it comes, it says uh, it's got the green bubble, not the, not the blue. That means it's delivered on the iPhone. Okay. And Mackenzie has an iPhone. Correct. Okay. And so do you? Yes. Okay. And um, following that denial on August first through fourth, uh, did you plan and did you in fact effectuate the pickup of Mackenzie on August 15th? Yes, we did. And uh, did you transport or did somebody else um, transport? Uh, uh, my, my girlfriend, Sierra, did the, did the travel down there. Again, pre previous to August 15th, did you receive any communication from Ms. Coolidge indicating she would not be bringing the child? Uh, this time, I don't believe I did. I think all she wanted to talk about was the was the therapist stuff. And at that time, um, on August 12th, referee Snyder issued an order that ordered both you and Ms. Coolidge to communicate via app close, correct? Correct, yes. And did you, in fact, set that up and send Ms. Um, Coolidge an invite? I did, yeah. And so that was the week of your parenting time did she accept that invite um it took her i think she just accepted it a few days ago so it took her some time yeah, to it accept it over a week after yeah um following the august 12th 
order that you are to communicate via app close, did Ms. Coolidge in fact communicate with you previous to the August 15th parenting time on app close? No. How did she communicate with you? On uh, same via text. And um, another thing we alleged in our motion was the fact that Ms. Coolidge was already ordered to pay attorney's fees in the amount of $447.50. And that was a result of the first order following our contempt motion, as well as a $100 fine to your counsel as a result of the second motion. Um, those were to be paid by July 20th and 29th, respectively. Are you aware if she has done that? I have not received any anything. And the third order regarding contempt also ordered attorney's fees to be paid by Ms. Coolidge. Is that your understanding? That's correct. Yeah. And in relation to your motion for show cause, what are you requesting from the court today? Uh, like we've been asking for the last eight months or so. I just want that court order to be followed. I want to see my daughter. That's all it boils down to. Are you asking for makeup parenting time of um, eight days that were missed? Yes. And are you also asking for attorney's fees associated with the need to file fourth motion and prepare for the hearing and attend the hearing? Yes, we are. Um, are you also asking for... Ms. Coolidge to be held in contempt for not paying the attorney's fees and the fine as she was ordered previously? Yes. And at this point, what kind of resolution do you see that would essentially get you the parenting time with your child? Uh, just for her to follow through and follow the order that has been set multiple times now. Um, for us to reestablish the uh, relationship with my daughter. Do you believe that this recent denial in totality with all other denials of parenting time since the order entered um, could affect the bond between you and Mackenzie? I wouldn't say it's getting any worse. It's not getting any better because she's not here. Okay. Is there anything else you wish the court to know in relation to your motion for show cause not at this time though no. thank you i don't have any further questions to this witness your honor okay thank you before i turn over to mr bland just to clarify Ms. henderson if you had stated that the denials that you brought to the court's attention today are for the weekend of august 1st and august 15th correct it's thursday through sunday your honor but then you've asked for through his testimony the makeup of eight days those two weekends doesn't make eight days. Well, right? it it's 9 a.m. on Thursday through 9 p.m. on Sunday. So it's, okay. it's three overnights, but it's th four days. Yeah. Yes. Four days, but three overnights. Correct. Okay. I was just trying to clarify. I didn't... It's 9 a.m. on Thursday through 9 p.m. on Sunday. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bland, uh, cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Hinky, you testified that she sent some, I think your words were casual text messages. Is that correct? Correct, right, yes. Okay, and by she, I guess that's Ms. Coolidge? Yes. And what was the nature of these casual, I guess, why are they casual? I mean, it's just a text message. It's not, it's not anything, it's not like an urgent phone call. It's text. Oh, okay, all right, I understand now. And, and in those, she indicated that she was not going to, I, I guess your terminology was show up to the parenting time? That's correct. Did she indicate to you in those text messages why? I don't believe so, no. Okay. You, you said later on that uh, you, you were going back and forth on something and she wanted to talk about, I think your, your words were counseling. Do you recall that? I'm sorry. And, and what did she want to discuss about the counseling? Uh, the ther the, she wanted to discuss the therapist and uh, how she wanted me to drive four plus hours all the way down there to, to have a meeting with them. 
to meet with the just the counselor or to meet with the counselor and the child? I'm not 100 percent sure. All right. Did was there a, a method set up so that you could play video games with your child? That is correct. Yes. OK. I, and I'm a little unfamiliar. What kind of games were you able to do like this? Uh, just several video games on the PlayStation. OK. And, and did you do that? We have, yes. All right. And do you do that on a regular basis? Uh, I, I mean, I don't have that much free time. I'm not on the video games all day, no. Okay. All right. But you, you have done that. Is that A few true? times, yes. Okay. Are you able to communicate when you play these video games? I mean, is there an ability to chat or do you have uh, voice communications while you do this? Uh, we have not talked uh, with voice. I'm not sure if she has that ability. Have there been chats during the game? No. Okay, you're just playing the games together. Correct. All right. And and that's happened on some occasions, but not, not on the regular occasions from what I'm getting. Yes. All right. Um, are you willing to meet with this counselor then? Oh, yeah, we've reached out already. Um, we've had conversations with the over email with the counselor. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Henderson? Yes, um, just briefly. Mr. Hankey, since speaking with a counselor, did um, that counselor get any of your perspective on parenting time or what has been going on or no? He's not. So you simply discussed the treatment plan for Mackenzie and requested medical records? Correct. Right. Okay, thank you. I do not have any further questions. Anything else, Mr. Bland? Just one based on counselor, or pardon me, um, counsels. What was the nature of the treatment plan? Were you involved with it or to be involved with it? I was not, not been since the start. I just and, recently started getting emails with the uh, whatever, the reports of the sessions. So, so you're getting session reports from the counselor? Right. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any further questions. Ms. Anderson, Nothing else? further. Thank okay. you. So you can step down. Thank you. You want to make a good witness from yes. yep. back? Thank you. Before you sit down, if you'd raise your right hand, we'll have you sworn in, and we'll proceed. Okay. Ma'am, do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Thank you. May have a seat, ma'am, and then proceed, Ms. Anderson, when you're ready. Thank you. Ms. Bilodeau, could you please state your full name and spell your last name for the record? Christine Language Bilodeau, B-I-L-O-D-E-A-U. Thank you. Um, what is your relation to Mr. Hankey and Mackenzie? I'm Jared's mom and I'm Mackenzie's paternal grandmother. And did you in fact do transportation for pickup of Mackenzie for parenting time on August 1st? Yes. Could you please describe to the court what steps you took that day in order to get to your destination? I arrived at 8.42. I texted Samantha at 8.45. I went to McDonald's to get proof of where I was. Between nine o'clock and 9.45, I walked the perimeter of McDonald's looking for the two vehicles, which I never saw. And then I attempted to call her at 9.30, went straight to voicemail, and then I left at 9.45. Thank you. And when you said McDonald's, um, that was the McDonald's referenced in the original order on Jefferson Avenue That's in correct. Fort Wayne. Yes. 
thank you. And you verified that that was the right location when you went inside? Yes. Okay. Um, you were in fact present during one of the exchanges that did occur and it was the same location? That's correct. Okay, yes. thank you. And um, did you receive any response to your text message or the phone call? Did not. Did anybody pick up the phone when you called? No. Okay. And uh, you waited for approximately an hour from the time that you arrived? Yes. And 45 minutes from the time of the meeting? That's correct. Yes. And did you end up driving home without Mackenzie? Yes. Okay. Um, is there anything else you'd like to state in relation to that trip? No. How much time did it take you? Uh, so it's two hours one way, so just over four hours. Plus the wait time? Correct. Okay, thank you. And uh, any idea on the cost of gas? Um, it's 126 miles one way, so and takes three quarters of a tank of gas, so I figured right around $50. Okay, all right. Thank you. Anything else you would like the court to know in relation to that trip? No. Thank you. I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Bland, any cross-examination? I don't have any questions. Okay, ma'am, you can step down and uh, thank you. Your Honor, may I get the other witness? Yes. Thank you. Do you can see? Ma'am, before you sit down, would you raise your right hand? We'll have you sworn in. Do you solemnly swear or from the testimony you are about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, go ahead and have a seat, please. Ms. Henderson, you can proceed. Thank you. Ms. Henderson, um, we're not related. I just want to make sure, but she does share the same last name as me. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Ms. Henderson, could you please state your full name and spell your last name for the record? Sierra Henderson, H-E-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. -E and how are you related to Mr. Hankey and Mackenzie? I am Jared's significant other. Okay, and how long have you known Jared? Eight years. And how long have you been in a romantic relationship? Eight years. Okay. All right. Um, were you the one transporting or set to transport Mackenzie uh, to parenting time on August 15, 2024? I was. Tell the court what steps you took that day in order to get to the destination to pick up Mackenzie. Um, I left our home about seven o'clock in the morning. I drove down to the McDonald's meeting location in Fort Wayne. I got there probably about 8.50ish or so. Um, I attempted to send a text to Miss Coolidge to let her know I'd arrived and when I was driving. Um, and then I proceeded to wait until about 9.30. After that, I um, made my way back home. Did you happen to walk around to see if there were vehicles parked? I, I drove my vehicle around, yes, at about 9.15 and about 9.30 before I left. Did you get any responses to your text messages? I did not. I believe she has my phone number blocked. We both have uh, Apple phones. My text was green, which usually means that the phone number is blocked. Okay. Um, were you prepared to pick up Mackenzie and take her to parenting time at that point? Yes. Did you have to take time off work to do the drive? Yes, I did. Okay. And um, do you remember how much you spent in gas for that trip? Um, probably about $50 or so. It was full tank of gas. And uh, at this point, how long did it take you from the time you left your home to when you returned? Uh, I got back to work that day about 1130, so about four and a half hours. Thank you. Um, and you are certain that that was the right location? Yes, the same location we go to every time. <laughs> and you know that because you participated in one of the previous exchanges that actually did occur? Both that occurred, yes. A and that was the same location? Yes. Thank you. I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. And any uh, cross-examination? No, Your Honor. Okay. Ma'am, you may be excused. Thank you. Henderson, next one. Um, Your Honor, we rest at this point. Um, that is all the witnesses we had, um, same witnesses we had almost every motion hearing. Okay. Stating that my client was there and Mr. Bland's client was there. Thank you. Mr. Bland, any witnesses? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Looks like that uh, concludes the uh, proofs in this matter. Uh, Ms. Henderson, uh, any closing argument? Um, yes, Your Honor, briefly. Unfortunately, this is our fourth time in front of the court on 
the same issues. And unfortunately, previous orders holding Ms. Coolidge in contempt did absolutely nothing for uh, the parenting time to occur. She continues to ignore the court orders. She continues to not show up. Um, in fact, at the last hearing we had with referee Snyder, she stated that she intends to withhold the child. And clearly that is done in bad faith, as is referenced in referee Snyder's recent order. We're asking, Your Honor, for the makeup parenting time to occur, and that would be four days and uh, three overnights times two. So Thursday through Sunday, 9 a.m. through 9 p.m., uh, my client has already been granted a significant amount of parenting time to make up, but unfortunately, he's not able to exercise that parenting time if plaintiff continues not to show up to the parenting time exchanges. Significant distance between the parties does make it a little bit easier for Ms. Coolidge not to show up to those exchanges. I don't know what solution the court has in that matter. Um, possibly having my client going to plaintiff's home with a peace officer to retrieve the child, possibly some other uh, way for him to actually get his parenting time. But we're asking for that makeup parenting time to occur and for Ms. Coolidge to be put on notice that the court order has not been changed and it needs to be followed. Um, another couple of things that we referenced in our motion relate to her non-compliance with the previous contempt order, specifically regarding payment of attorney's fees and fine to defendant's counsel's office, um, totaling $547.50. Um, my client keeps incurring very significant attorney's fees and he's still here. He is determined and devoted to getting to see his child. Um, for court's reference, it took him about four years to get that order. And now that we have the order, nothing has changed because his parenting time still does not occur. We're also asking for attorney's fees associated with the need to file the motion, argue the motion, and then attend the evidentiary hearing in front of your honor. Um, I can prepare a bill of costs. Um, I have submitted bill of costs associated with the third motion earlier today per referee Snyder's request. Um, so I can do the same thing for this motion once uh, the hearing is over. At this time, Your Honor, I'm asking for the court to do something to make Ms. Coolidge take this order seriously. And I think my client has made it very clear on the stand. He just wants to see his child. He is not here uh, for any other reason but to reestablish the bond and the relationship with his daughter. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bland, uh, any closing argument? Um, just briefly, Your Honor. Um, well, I'm also a big believer that court orders ought to be filed or followed. I mean, they're they're there for a reason. And and obviously there was times when this order was not followed. I think the real question is why, without being able to present her testimony, it's kind of difficult to present the why. And there was, of course, at least a preliminary motion to try to modify the parenting time. I, I, I would simply say this, if, if she were here, I think she would tell the court that she didn't think it was necessarily at this speed uh, in the best interest of the child, but she's not here. So I'll at least make that offer of proof on her behalf. Um, she's always indicated to me that she thought parenting time should occur. She just didn't think it should be for weekends at a time. Be that as may, the order does um, exist. I believe that this order will be complied with. I think obviously when she gets word of the seriousness of this, I, I think it'll compel her to do so. Um, it still may need to be modified in the future based on how the child adjusts to it, but that's for another day. Uh, the only thing I would ask at this point, Judge, is uh, certainly um, the court has issued a bench warrant for a non-appearance. Uh, if the court wants to make orders as to sanctions, that's fine. I would ask that that not include additional jail time, at least uh, until we can clear the, uh, the bench warrant that the court has issued already. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, Ms. Anderson? Um, Your Honor, just a brief response to 
Mr. Bland's comment about parenting time. Um, Ms. Coolidge has not complied with the scheduling order for the original hearing. She did not like the decision that the referee rendered. She then filed a motion for reconsideration and the court denied. She filed a motion to set aside recommendation. The court denied that. So again, this is just Ms. Coolidge not liking the order and choosing not to follow it. It has absolutely nothing to do with the child's reaction or with the child struggling with parenting time. In fact, if you read referee uh, Snyder's latest order, he questions the validity and credibility of the statements regarding um, the child's reaction to the parenting time or even the counselor involvement. So all of that, again, signifies to my client that Ms. Coolidge literally is going out of her way to actively prevent the contact between the child and her father. And that is absolutely not okay. And we're asking for the court to stop that. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, the court would note that uh, in this uh, particular matter that any order regarding parenting time, child support was entered back on uh, April 12, 2024. That sets forth the parenting time that uh, the defendant has been following in this uh, particular matter. After that order was entered on uh, May 21st, 2024, uh, it was a hearing before the uh, referee and an order was entered at that time providing for a makeup parenting time of three hours. And uh, that in fact also ordered the plaintiff to pay attorney fees of $447.50 within 60 days of that hearing. That neither of those was complied with. Next, on, uh, there was a hearing with the referee, and an uh, order was entered on 628-24 for a second finding of contempt, and uh, that was from the denial of May 11, 2024, and the referee provided for makeup parenting time of 12 hours and awarded the defendant $100 in attorney fees to be paid within 30 days. Subsequent to that, on uh, August 9, 2024, the referee did its third finding of contempt in this matter, which, uh, again, would order makeup parenting time in, uh, in this particular case for periods of the weekend or the week, the three, four days from uh, June 20, 2024 to June 23, 2024, July 4, 2024 4 to July 7, 2024, July 18, 2024 through July 21st, 2024. And uh, that at that point awarded and in fact ordered the plaintiff to pay attorney fees. And as Ms. Henderson says, those are just recently that bill of costs was submitted. Uh, we now have the current proceedings concerning the time of August 1, 2024 through August 4th, 2024, and then the time of August 15, 2024 through August 18, 2024. It does appear to the court in this matter that uh, the plaintiff is simply uh, not comply with the orders. She's flaunting the uh, her contemptuous behavior in this matter before the court and not uh, complying with any of the orders. And the court would note that this is a short period of time uh, simply from the first order that occurred back on May 21st from the order of April 12th, 2024. It's clear to this court based upon the history in this matter as well as uh, this current proceeding and again refusing to appear in this matter, uh, notwithstanding that the court had ordered uh, in person attendance and had re reiterated that to the, uh, Mr. Bland's office uh, when Mr. Bland contacted my office to uh, inquire if uh, again it would be possible for her to appear vis a vis Zoom. She clearly is not going to comply with the orders of the court. As a result, the court find that to be wrongful and contemptuous. The court is going to hold her to be in contempt in this particular case. 
the court would order the additional makeup parenting time of uh, four day, or eight days and three overnights for the times uh, as set forth from the uh, week weekend of the August 1st and August 15th and uh, would order that that would occur forthwith. The court would further find in this matter that uh, the testimony is shown from the defendant's mother that she in fact appeared at the uh, pickup place that uh, uh, she was very familiar with that, that she was there, uh, that she arrived, as she said, she walked the perimeter of the uh, McDonald's to make sure that she did not miss uh, the plaintiff. And uh, she waited for approximately an hour before she left. And then she proceeded to drive uh, four hours to uh, get back home. Then Miss Henderson, not Anya Henderson, but the uh, girlfriend Henderson, had stated that she appeared the weekend of August 15, 2024, that she drove and left, and she arrived at approximately 8.50 a.m., that she waited until 9.30 a.m., that she drove through the parking lot at approximately 9.15 a.m., and again at 9.30 a.m. before she left and went home, and it took her approximately four and a half hours. And she acknowledges that this is the same location that she had been previously to uh, again provide the transportation and pick up the minor child and the plaintiff has simply not appeared. So what the uh, plaintiff, excuse me, what the court is going to do in addition to holding her in contempt and having the makeup parenting time, the court is going to reserve on the sanctions in this matter until such time as Ms. Coolidge is before this court. And at that time, the court will render a uh, decision on those particular sanctions. The court would, if you wish, Ms. Henderson, to you can put in the uh, order that the defendant would be entitled to go to the plaintiff's home to pick up the minor child if he wishes to, in fact, make that entire trek and that he is entitled to enlist the assistance of any police officers to help him to acquire the uh, the child in his care and custody, even to the extent if the officer needs to enter the home to do so. Anything else, Ms. Henderson, before we conclude? Your Honor, just to clarify, you said eight days and three overnights. Did you mean six overnights? Six, yes, yes. Okay, thank I was, you. I was thinking of the individual, six overnights or eight days. And then you stated forthwith, Your Honor, um, all of Referee Snyder's um, makeup parenting time orders uh, state that makeup parenting time shall not be taken before November 1. Uh, I, I'm not going to, I'm going to say all of the parenting time that's been missed, all the makeup time will be made up at the time that we'll say forthwith. So each, each weekend be, from the time that she starts to allow the makeup parenting time, until all of the makeup time is concluded. So all at the same time. Is am I understanding you correctly? Each each successive weekend. Okay. Not at the same time, so that because I take the child's in school, the child has to go to school. She is not. She's homeschooled. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I didn't I was not aware of that. Yeah, she's the court would then allow the parenting time to then in fact encompass consecutive, all the consecutive missed. Uh, makeup parenting time. I was okay. not aware of that, nor did I see it in the file anywhere. Yes, Your Honor. There was uh, part of the initial hearing with referee Snyder, and that's why he ordered Thursday through Sunday because the child is not in formal right. school. I thought there was something unique to her schooling that maybe she didn't have schooling on mm -mm. those days or something of that nature. No. Okay. Uh, anything else, Ms. Anderson? Um. I don't think so. Just to clarify, Your Honor, again, to make sure I don't misunderstand. So once he gives, does does the court require for him to again to give thirty day notice? No. 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 And is there any notice required? I'm not going to require any notice. The order is the order. Okay. And she will need to follow that order, and uh, especially as it relates to the makeup. 
And so if my client chose to exercise all of the time that was previously granted to him, just to clarify, he could start with the three hours and end with the six overnights you ordered today and exercise it all in one chunk? Correct. Thank you. Yeah. And because it is a judge order, it supersedes um, referee Snyder's requirement yeah. for yeah. notice in yeah. November. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, uh, Mr. Bland? I, the only thing I can think of, I, I understand the child's homeschool, but if dad were to take all that time, I would ask that he be ordered to cooperate with the homeschooling program. Well, presumably he would do that. Uh, and uh, I'm more con and I, that I'm not concerned about her education. I'm more concerned about her visiting her father and having that time. So uh, obviously I would hope that that would happen. But uh, again, let's we're going to deal with one thing at a time. This time is... Uh, to get the uh, parenting time uh, commenced, and then we'll deal with you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. The court will uh, stand in uh, recess, and you're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. All, that, uh, all rise. Oh, I, go ahead. Have a seat. Yeah, that is brought up. I had not addressed the attorney fees for today's proceeding. Oh. Ms. Henderson, you should have caught them. Well, I figured this that would be encompassed with the sanctions. I wasn't sure. Well, no, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll order that the plaintiff would pay the attorney fees for these proceedings based upon Ms. Henderson providing another bill of cost in this uh, particular matter. And uh, again, if it's not objected to, then it'll go through. If so, then we might have to have a reasonableness hearing at that point. Thank you, Your Honor. And what about the request for for the attorney's fees that has already been granted, is the court giving her any type of "Hey, you must pay by such date"? Well, she's already she's already passed that, so the court will. Uh, uh, she's already delinquent on that. What happens? In fact, I, I had thought about that previously, and I will address that. Ms. Henderson, the court will grant you a writ of garnishment and slash or attachment to acquire any and all attorney fees ordered in this matter. Um, and you include that in the order as well. Thank you. And uh, for uh, the bill of costs from today, Your Honor, is there any <clears throat> is there any deadline for her to pay those attorney's fees? Uh, the court would order that those would be paid within 45 days of the court entering the order for those fees. Anything else? I, I don't believe so, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Bland, anything else? No, thank you. Okay, we will stay in recess. Thanks. Thanks.